Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the US Championship 2022. This one is from round 7. Uh, round 8 has already been played but this is a nice game that I've missed. Uh, it was recommended to me by my brother-in-law Yozarov who also runs a chess channel. If you haven't seen it, uh, do check it out. Uh, he also made an analysis of this game and he uh, enjoys studying theory a bit more than me. So if you guys want to uh, learn about the, the, the moves that were played here a bit more in depth, uh, I will put a link to his review of the game. It will be the first link in the description below. So it's a, a wonderful game, Ray Robson versus Wesley. So in it features a, an incredible line of the Nimso Indian defense. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. Uh, Ray with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6 by Wesley, c4, e6, knight to c3, and as advertised, bishop to b4, the Nimso Indian defense, e3, going for the standard stuff here, castles, and now knight to f3. And here, the standard moves are d5, c5, and b6. Those are the moves that you will uh, usually see, but here, Wesley plays bishop captures on c3. It's very rare as it uh, doesn't accomplish much, uh, so it comes uh, more as a surprise to Ray. Uh, that, then it uh, actually uh, sh should be played at this level. But you have to try something because Wesley's uh, uh, higher rated and he has to play for the win with the black pieces. So here uh, we have B captures on C3 and now pawn to D6. We have bishop to D3, uh, pawn to E5 uh, and now pawn to E4. And pawn to E4 uh, is a new move and it's um, a very, very uh, interesting one because it allows black to simply win a pawn. Here we have rook to E8. And now you're threatening just rook captures here, pawn captures, and knight captures on e4. But that's exactly what Ray wanted. Here Ray castles, and uh, he's offering a full pawn. So can Wesley capture this pawn? Uh, the pawn can be captured, uh, but you have to play uh, incredibly precisely after you, you you actually capture it. So e captures on d4, c captures, knight captures on e4, bishop not captures, but rather rook to e1. Now just threatening to win the knight, knight to f6, and now rook captures on e8. Queen captures, and now, yes, you do have the bishop pair, you've sacrificed one pawn, and now you have to make the bishop pair come alive. Uh, you will do this by putting the bishop on b2, claiming the long diagonal, the light square bishop controls this diagonal, and you will play d5 to open up the uh, dark square bishop's diagonal. But first, pawn to h3. It stops any uh, bishop g4 ideas, and also you will want to start advancing this pawn to g4 and g5. Then the bishops uh, will nicely, uh, uh, well, just uh, slice the entire board in half, and you even have some ideas of maybe bringing the rook to g1 to attack the black king. So it's a very, very aggressive line. We have knight b to d7, and now queen to c2. Uh, now, if the knight moves, of course, the h7 pawn becomes weak. b6, Wesley prepares the fianchetto to the light square bishop, and now bishop to b2. Wesley goes for bishop to b7, but now just pawn to d5. And look at the bishop pair now. This is now a fully operational bishop pair, and Wesley will have to figure out what to do with the light square bishop. So he is up a pawn, but his light square bishop uh, pretty much uh, out of commission for the moment. And now... Uh, you know that this rook for the moment is coming to e1, and then the queen really does not have uh, any good square. So queen to f8, now ready to meet rook to e1 with rook to e8, but here Ray just plays g4. And now playing rook to e8 doesn't really make all that much sense. If you play rook to e8 now, just g5 kicks away the knight, and then you pick up the h7 pawn. So you have to address the threat of g5. Um, after this um, uh, pawn to g4 move. So here we have pawn to h6, and now king to h2. As the g file uh, might open up, then rook to g1 could be very, very strong. So here, Wesley has to uh, figure out how to continue this game, and it's definitely not easy. One thing you could consider is to undermine the center with a move like b5, then uh, the, the d5 pawn becomes weak. Another thing that you could do is play rook to e8, but again, it's a very hard um, to calculate all the ins and outs, because after g5, h captures and rook to g1, you have to play g4, give back the pawn to close the g file, and after h captures, you will play knight to e5, something like this. And after knight captures here, d captures, now comes g5. And now, for example, knight h5, and this is the position you would get. Uh, white still has the incredibly strong bishop pair. Uh, the, well, the, the white king is a bit loose, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a completely crazy position. Wesley still has to figure out how to develop the bishop. Probably you can shift it into the game somehow, but for the moment, it, 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 um, it's not all that uh, uh, likely how. 
Uh, but okay, in the game, Wesley played pawn to c6 instead. This is how he wants to bust open the center. Uh, but this gives Ray just enough time to start an incredible attack. And he does so with pawn to g5. H captures on g5, knight captures on g5. And now, again, it's very hard to find a move here for Wesley. Queen to e7, probably the most precise one. But here he plays c captures on d5. And now the position is winning for Ray. But you have to find the only line that uh, that, that is winning. It's such a, such a cool line. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it if you find it. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Ray while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, incredible maneuver. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to h7 check. So nothing, uh, you know, spectacular about a nice bishop check, but it's what comes after that count. So of course, the bishop cannot be captured. If you capture the bishop, then it's just mate. Queen captures on h7. And uh, after king to h8, what was played in the game, now comes the move you had to see after bishop to h7, and that is bishop to f5. With the simple threat of just bishop capture, on d7 and then if knight captures again queen to h7 is checkmate so wesley needs to deal with this he plays knight to e5 which is the absolute best move uh, and now pawn to f4 kicking away this knight and again opening up this diagonal knight to g6 other moves aren't really all that much better uh, but this allows a, a very nice breakthrough with bishop captures on f6 g captures on f6 and now just knight captures on f7 eliminating the knight's defender Queen captures and the bishop captures on g6. And the black is still up material, but his king is completely uh, wide open. And it is very, very easy to attack that uh, black king. So Wesley has to set up some sort of a defense. So queen to e7. Now uh, white uh, goes queen to f2, preparing queen to h4 check. So f5, now the queen guards the h4 square. And now rook to g1. We have rook to g8. Uh, and now comes rook to g5. You could also play something like queen f3 to try and get the queen to h5. Uh, but Ray just goes to rook to g5 and now the queen gets access to the h4 square. Rook to g7 by Wesley. We have queen to h4 check, king to g8 and now the beautiful queen to h5. And now yeah, again, uh, the, 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 the problem is if you play something, let's say pawn to a6, uh, bishop h7 check uh, just crushes black. King to f8, rook captures on f5 with check, rook to f7 and now even bishop to g6. There's no move you can play here. Queen to h8 is coming, and that's just it. The, the, there's no good move here. Uh, or, or you have to give up a full rook. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, so Wesley plays bishop to c8. It's it's a nicer idea because the, the f5 pawn is now defended, and it's um, not all that clear how to win this. There is only one move that uh, allows uh, Ray to win the game. So feel free to pause the video for the second time and try to find this idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on, uh, you know, probably finding the least interesting move, but that's the move that wins the game. And for those of you uh, who just want to enjoy the show, it is C captures on D5. Now, it's such a silly move to play because there's all this action happening here and everything is uh, tied up. Uh, the problem is if you don't capture this, how are you winning this? Let's say you continue. Uh, I'm going to show you what happens if you just continue what Wesley played without actually capturing this pawn. And that is, let's say you go queen to h6, and it's fine. Uh, what can you do? D captures on c4 now happens. And now, you, once you play bishop to h7 check, king to f8, and rook to g2, yes, the rook is still uh, tied, uh, tied down, you can't move the rook anywhere, but now bishop to b7, and what do you play now? Uh, you don't have rook e2, the queen covers that, the, the, the rook is attacked, so best, best you can do is just captures, captures, and now queen captures on d6, but you will not be winning this game. King f7 and black is very happy here. Uh, so uh, what you have to do after this uh, bishop to c8 is just play c captures on d5. This closes up this diagonal and, uh, well, does not give black the, the, the free c pawn. And now black is without a move. Uh, Wesley tried pawn to a5. He has uh, the 2 to 1 advantage on the queen side, so he might be able to create a pass pawn if Ray doesn't really do all that much. But now queen h6. We have pawn to b5 uh, and now bishop to h7 check, king to f8 and now rook to g2. But now it was in this position on move 35 that Wesley so resigned the game as there is nothing more uh, to be done here.
Uh, the problem is without this bishop to b7 move, there's uh, really no counterplay. Whatever you do, it just loses the game. For example, you start pushing on the queen side, just bishop captures on f5. And now uh, the h8 square becomes available to the white queen. Let's say bishop captures on f5. Uh, queen h8 check, king to f7, now the rook hangs, king to f6, and now a nice open discovery. King to f7 and queen to g7 will be checkmate, one of the possibilities. And on the other hand, if you don't want to allow this, if you really want to keep this pawn, you could play something like queen to f7. Uh, but now uh, you've moved the queen uh, from the e-file, so just just rook e2 and now look at this bishop covers g8 so the king can't go there king can't go to e7 to e8 uh, how do you stop queen captures on d6 that's just a disgusting position to, to face queen d7 now a simple queen to f6 check rook to f7 and the nice queen to h8 checkmate as the rook still covers the e file so incredible stuff by uh, by ray incredible pawn sacrifice that allowed this it it wasn't uh that the pawn sacrifice was winning or anything it was just um i mean it was just uh very very, very interesting just utilizing the bishop pair like this and it all came down to this moment basically where wesley played pawn to c six here if you if you find this uh it's not uh, pleasant to play. It gives black a, a really bad position. But also, also if you find b5, then maybe you can continue the game. But other than that, uh, once c6 was played, yeah, it was all downhill for, for black. So incredible uh, game by, by Ray Robson against the, the Nimzo Indian defense. Truly a magnificent line. And uh, uh, with, uh, and uh, he broke 2700 for the first time. He also won a game after this in round 8. Uh, so he even uh, passed 2700. I think he's like 27 or, or something. He's number 37 and now in the world. I will check. I don't want to trick you guys. Uh, yeah, he's currently, no, he's currently number 20, uh, 35 with 2706, and he's currently up uh, 16 rating points, so uh, very, very nicely done by him, and uh, yeah, he's doing, uh, he's doing really, really well in this tournament, uh, if you guys are interested in the standings, I will even give you that. Uh, the standings are as uh, follows. Uh, first place for the moment, Fabiano Coruana with 6 out of 8, followed by 5.5 out of 8, Ray Robson. Then with 4.5, we have a whole lot of people. Uh, Jeffrey Xiong, Dario Schwirch, uh, Samuel Sevian, uh, and Wander Ling, and uh, uh, Lainier Dominguez Perez. With 4 points, we have Sam Shankland. With 3.5, Alexander Lenderman, Christopher Yu, and Wesley So. With 3, Hans Moke Niemann and Levon Aronian and uh, Elshan Moradebadi uh, with uh, one and a half points in last place currently. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game and the standings. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Like I said, if you want to uh, learn a bit more about these lines in depth, do check out Yozaro's video. It will be the first link in the description below uh, as he does a more thorough job uh, uh, covering the lines. He's a, a great student of the of the theory himself. So uh, uh, for those of you who enjoyed that, do check it out. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and a little bit of standings. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Len Herbert. Congratulations, Dr. Takol. Francis Sir, Ashish Shayar. Um, uh, uh, Jayaraman and Duncan Winkle for uh, Winkel for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.